Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome all of you again to this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. As we will now begin reading from the to, from the from the Gospels and the readings today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone is enjoying their Sunday morning, and let us begin. <clears throat> A reading from the Book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. He said, "I am the Lord your God." Who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery? You have no, you shall have no gods except me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in heaven or on earth, beneath or in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. And I punish the father's fault in the sons, the grandsons, and the great grandsons of those who hate me. But I show kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not utter the name of the Lord your God to misuse it, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the unpunished man who utters his name to misuse it. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day for the Lord your God. You shall no, do no work that day, neither you nor your son nor your daughter nor your servants, men or women, nor your animals nor the stranger who lives with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that these hold, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it sacred. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may have a long life in the land of, that the Lord your God has given to you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not convict your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his servant, man or woman, or his ox. On his donkey, or anything that is his. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the first letter of Saint Paul to the Corinthians. While the Jewish demand miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here are we preaching a crucified Christ to the Jews, an obstacle they they cannot yet overcome; to the pagans, madness. But to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, a Christ who is power and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll now uh, do the honours of proclaiming the gospel. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will not never die. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The word of the Lord and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and in the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons. And the money changers sitting at their counters there, making a whip out of some cord. He drove all of them out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well. Scattered the money changers, coins knocked over their tables, and said to the pigeon sellers, "Take all of this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market." Then his disciples remembered the words of Scripture, "Zeal for your house will devour me." The Jews intervened and said. What sign can you show us to justify what you have done? Jesus answered, "Destroy this sanctuary, and in three days I will raise it up." The Jews replied, "It has taken forty-six years to build this sanctuary. Are you going to raise it up in three days?" But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body, and when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words that he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem for the Passover, many believed in his name, while they saw the signs that he gave. But Jesus knew of them all and did not trust himself to them. 
He never needed evidence about any man. He could tell what a man had in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Pray, thank, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When it comes to the Ten Commandments, ladies and gentlemen, in this day and age, or any day and age for that matter, it is so easy for all of us to get wrapped up in this idea or this belief that we are above the law. Our actions and our beliefs uh, seem to put us in a different level, in a different class. I need to uh, just quickly shut this window. Right, there we go. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. So, where were we? If we truly believed we were above the law, ladies and gentlemen, then that just that should simply mean that we are exalted from the law, are we not? So, if we really are exalted from the law, then what is to stop us from breaking every law in the book? It's pretty obvious if you ever push this question towards somebody who is acting in a particularly disgraceful manner, it would be all too easy for all of us to, again, point to him and saying that if they can do it, then why can't I do it? What grants them permission to do the things that they can do, but yet we cannot do? It would almost seem as if like this justification for wanting to break the rules comes from the fact that many of us are simply frustrated with life. Many of us are frustrated by the fact that some people get to where they are through less than honourable or noble deeds. For example, there was there is a uh, I would I don't technically can call him a politician. There is a figurehead for a uh, political party called UKIP, the United Kingdom's Independence Party. A man who famously went by the name of Nigel Farage has famously said that he is giving up his uh, political or his career because, in his own words, his work is done. I would honestly like to say, ladies and gentlemen, because I've, I first heard about this man Farage back in 2012, and I would like to imagine, no doubt saying to this very day, that Farage's work is literally being over 10 years of stirring trouble, of wanting to uh, perforce a very, very obvious xenophobic agenda onto other people. Many people would say this is in turn breaking of the law because it is promoting hatred. The Ten Commandments, ladies and gentlemen, could e have easily been this, so it can be shortened down to just two. That is, love your God with all your heart, soul and mind. And the second, it really would depend on whether or not you can say this is the first or the second one, is to love thy neighbour. What justification do you think uh, in men like Nigel Farage that he can promote the idea that he loves his neighbour? What justification could you possibly say for, no doubt, many millions of ordinary people all over the world can really say that they love thy neighbour? Or that they could uphold anything else uh, that uh, is uh, commended by the, by the law. Because when you think about it, the simple rules and guidelines and even again, I'll say the word laws can be summarized by basically those two commandments. To uh, love God and to uh, love thy neighbor. Because everything done unto others is doing things unto uh, God. And he, he knows what uh, we're up to. He's, God is not stupid. Because even his uh, foolishness is greater than our wisdom. Because what we need to remember is that God is a, com a completely different entity to us humans. His ways are not our ways. And especially when it comes to uh, the uh, for the gospel reading from John today, ladies and gentlemen, they, sim they turned a church, a place of sanctuary, a place of worship, into a commercial commercial den for the lions. They turned it into a place where religion and all things holy had seemingly been banished from a place that was intentionally made to be a place of worship. And now they Jesus's outburst, let us call it, as a result of the fact that now people are putting their worship and their faith into money and not into uh, God's uh, word. 
very very similar ladies and gentlemen if you remember the story of the story of the writing of the ten commandments and how moses immediately smashed them once uh, the people who were free from bondage and slavery from egypt began to praise a golden calf statue it 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 seems it seems uh fair enough you might say ladies and gentlemen that moses as well as jesus were a little bit hacked off when the fact that out of the fact that uh, God has delivered uh, these people from slavery and it would be Jesus' turn to free people from slavery, the slavery of sin, people will immediately turn their back on the Lord and begin to uh, praise or show arrogance towards uh, God's word by immediately doing something that is undesirable in the eyes of God. But again, ladies and gentlemen, we are human beings. We are not like God. We are not like Jesus. We may say we are as great or as high as God, but unfortunately, no one is as greater than God. It is, in, in many ways, it's as simple as that. Think about what we have right now, ladies and gentlemen, because whether or not it is through a mobile phone, a television set, a computer, money in our bank account, there are many things in this world that seem to draw our attention away from God, probably more than we realize. There was even a, a survey issued uh, in, the, in the diocese that many people were simply saying that they, they did not feel particularly very comfortable with uh, being able to pray in the comfort in church. Because it was nothing to do with the decor, the lighting, the heating, the... Uh, the rickety noise from other people, you do get that a lot in churches, I'm afraid. But simply because people, they did not feel as if like they could be close to God even in his own house. Which, I'd say that's concerning, but then again, what exactly can be done? What is that exactly you wish to pray for? What is it that you have come to church for? What What is, what do you want from God? Because you are more than free to ask him. You don't need, technically, to be in God's house to pray to God. You do not need a priest to any extent to make you into a good person. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it is only, speaking from very definite experience, who you are, a Catholic, a Jew, or somebody who worships, worships Islam, Buddhism, it is only when you are faced with an obstacle, something that really tests your beliefs and proves to the world who you really are. There are many situations, ladies and gentlemen, certainly in my life, where I've been tested to this extent, where I could have done something, or I could not have done something, and there would have been consequences as a result. You So all you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is sit back, think about things over, and then decide what you are going to do, or not do, as the case might be. These things may sound trivial, ladies and gentlemen, but these are things that people have to face every single day of our lives. And I know fine well that this may go in reference to you as well. Because whether, you, whether or not you believe in God or not, there are many things in this world that begin to test your morals or, what, whatever, or your common sense, whatever it might be. But surely, ladies and gentlemen, if there's anything to be taken away from uh, the readings today, and especially in the Gospel is that we need to find way, we need rules, we need guidelines, we need something to keep us on the straight and narrow, and to understand exactly why people will take an issue for those who are taking away our right to uh, be closer to God. And many people have issues with these sorts of things, but there are also increasing numbers of people who simply do not know exactly why or what the purpose of all of this is. Or what the relevancy of the Ten Commandments have if only a certain amount of people will actually follow them. For that, ladies and gentlemen, we should not technically be concerned, and I, you know you've heard me say this before, it, it, we should not be concerned with pointing our fingers to any real direction. We should be learning to point them inwards. It is not about them. It is about us. It is about the you, the I. It is about myself and God. Because as I ask to God, what is, it, what is it he wants from me? God will no doubt look down and ask me, who am I and what do I want? God is a very understanding person, ladies and gentlemen. 
he an entity as well well an entity a friend a person somebody you can talk to and if he will show you a way then he no doubt will show you the way bear that in mind ladies and gentlemen because rules are not necessarily the hardest to follow but it is only when we consistently do so do we really show the world who we truly are in the name of the father and the son and of the holy spirit amen